you're watching back at home. In today's episode, we will be discussing the first book of Claude Debussy's Image, published in 1905. Two years later, Debussy will publish the second volume, which we will discuss in the next video. For today, let's focus on Reflet d'Arlo, the reflections on the water, Hommage à Rameau, a tribute to Rameau and the movement, the movement. Although Debussy wasn't so fond of being referred to as an impressionist, he certainly worked alongside painters using new combinations of colors to paint. Debussy is using the tone color here on the piano to paint the pictures of gentle reflections on the water. Water was a very popular subject among musicians as well as painters of the late 19th and early 20th century. Debussy is pushing the boundaries of the musical language by utilizing new modes such as the whole tone mode, which is made uh, entirely out of whole steps. He will also be using chromaticism. He also introduces new harmonies and sonorities that will inspire generations upon generations of jazz musicians. We are dealing here with chromaticism, but also a whole new set of chords, harmonies that would later become an inspiration for a famous jazz pianist, Bill Evans. In the second movement, Hommage à Rameau, Debussy pays tribute to his compatriot from the Baroque era, 
Jean-Philippe Rameau. And he is doing this through a saraband, a very popular court dance during the 18th century. He is treating the material first in a monophonic manner, reminiscent of even older music, perhaps that of the Middle Ages, and I'm talking about the plain chant, the Gregorian chant. sensuousness. Debussy introduces something very interesting by me in the beginning of this passage certainly sounds like a series of overtones. Debussy, in a very understated way, combines all the elements he previously introduced in the piece. You will recognize the opening plain chant, you will hear the sonorous bells, as well as the sensuousness of the dance itself. The serious, noble, and sensuous dance is followed by a quick movement, simply movement. And it seems to be an ode to the 20th century. Debussy is depicting the hustle and bustle of big cities and sound of new machines. And for this, Debussy is writing a perpetual mobile, a piece in a perpetual motion. always 
service managers to pay a tribute to the tradition while innovating at the same time. Listen to this. This is so-called parallel organum, a compositional technique known in the Middle Ages. Of course, writing parallel fifths or octaves was a huge no-no in the Paris Conservatory and earned Debussy failing grades in his harmony class. to a technique of faux bourdon known in the Renaissance. You would never know this because it sounds so dissonant, but yet this is something that would have been used in the music of Dufay or Okechem. So listen. brings in the whole tone scale suspending the entire passage entirely in the whole tone mode and the piece ends as abruptly as a flick of an electric switch. Thank you so much for joining me for this introduction to the first book of Debussy's Image. I very much hope that you download the Debussy on Fifth Avenue album where you will hear these beautiful pieces in their entirety. Please do subscribe to my channel where you will find more weekly videos on the Back at Home playlist. In the meantime, please do stay safe.